you're ready, go ahead. I wanted movement and not a common course of existence. I wanted excitement and danger and the chance to sacrifice myself for my love. I felt in myself a superabundance of energy which found no outlet in our quiet life. Leo Tolstoy. The quote that I just read is the most inspiration for the person that I'm going to introduce you. Uh, Christopher Johnson McCandless was uh, an American student. Uh, and uh, he was different. He was uh, born in a wealth and rich family, but he was different. He had other dreams and he wanted to follow his dreams. He was tired for the materialist and mainstream American culture. He wanted something new. He wanted to change his life. So, <clears throat> I will introduce you uh, Chris McCandless and I will speak about three points. His early life, his travels, and the third point, the most important, I wanted to call it Alaska because just not just for the state but also for the atmosphere all the and for all the insights that Alaska contains. So at first early life who was Chris McCandless? Chris McCandless is this guy. Uh, in this picture is uh, he's with uh, three brothers. Uh, he was born on uh, 12th February 1968 in South California and uh, his, um, he was the first of uh, two children. Uh, these these uh, brothers are from uh, the first marriage of his father, so his, ma his father was divorced. Um, during his childhood, Chris McCandless was a student, a good student. Uh, he had a strong body, a strong, uh, well, uh, health, healthy body, and uh, he was one of the best athletes in the school. He was al almost uh, first place when he did some uh, sports activities. But his childhood was a little eventful. Um, at the age of eight, his family moved in. Uh, Virginia, yes, in a suburb of Washington DC. And um, maybe the best, the most important person for him in, during his childhood was his uh, younger sister, Corinne. Here is uh, with his sister. Uh, the parents, the relationship between uh, their parents is not uh, good. The parents fought too many times. They thought a lot of times to divorce, so he was a little tired of that situation and he didn't like that atmosphere. His father was a rich man, he, he worked for NASA, for Aerospatial, for, for the space, for uh, America. And uh, his father wanted the best for him, for his career. So when uh, uh, when Chris McCandless graduated in uh, 1990, so when he was 22 years old, at uh, the Atlanta University in Georgia, uh, their parents wanted the best for him. They dreamed about his career. Uh, you have to, to, to keep studying too. We, have, we want the best for you. They, they could buy everything for him, they could buy cars, everything, but he refused, he refused everything. He won also a good, uh, a lot of money for his graduation. His, gra his uh, bachelor's degree was about history and anthropology, but uh, he decided to give the most of this money for charity. And this, he decided to give up. Now we are at the second point of this presentation. The second point uh, are his travels. After his uh, bachelor's degree, he decided to take a break. He decided to travel to discover himself. He was tired of uh, the materialist society. He was tired of 
the American culture at the, that moment. So he decided to take his car to leave the family, to leave the money, to leave the career, to leave the friends, to leave everything. And just with his car, I decided to start it, to, to, to start it crossing the USA. He, he, after, some, after some travels, he lost his car because the car uh, broke down. So he, he decided to uh, just move in hitching across the USA. And uh, without money, without anything, just a bag and uh, a lot of dreams. Uh, he, <coughs> during these travels, during these years, he met amazing people. And uh, uh, he had really, really close relationships with some of the people that he met. And uh, to these people, he, he didn't speak about his family. He wanted to forget his past, and he started speaking about his dream, Alaska. He wanted to go to Alaska, to, to discover himself, to come back to a primordial situation of human. Yeah, he wanted to go there. So he crossed a lot of states. He went also to the Gulf of Mexico. And uh, <clears throat> in April 1992, finally, I think he could go from North Dakota to Alaska. He went to Alaska to this park, the Nelly Park. Here it looks uh, quiet and easy to live, but it's not like that. Alaska is maybe, re it's really dangerous, Alaska. There are a lot of dangerous animals. And if you're not ready to, to live there, if you don't have the tools to live there, it could be really hard to survive. People who uh, met him during his travels uh, started thinking that he was uh, crazy. He, he imagine you have all the money that you want, and you decided to leave everything and to go to Alaska. It sounds crazy. He arrived to Alaska in April 1992, and uh, since this moment, he won't ever meet other people. He has some tools, some guns, some knives to hunt animals. He doesn't have food. He's there just to just to just to think, just to discover the real essence of life. He loves ad adventures, and this is one picture that uh, he took to himself during this, this experience. Uh, in, a, in this park, he found this uh, train. It's a wagon, uh, or a bus, yes, it's a bus. And in this bus, he uh, built his small house. He slept there, he had all the tools there, and he tried to survive inside of, of, this, of this bus. Now this bus uh, has become uh, an attra a touristic attraction. A lot of people will go there to see the place that where Chris McCandless wanted to live. Uh, during this time, Chris McCandless changed his name because he wanted to forget his past. And he, uh, he decided to get the name Alex Supertramp. So now uh, he's known also like Alex, not just Chris. Oh. Uh, from April to August uh, in 1992, he survived here. Uh, in August 1992, uh, for something that he, uh, he ate, some berries, he died. His body was discovered by some hunters some days ago, some days after his death, and uh, his uh, weight was about 30 kilograms. He was starved. He starved. Uh, why? Why I choose?